OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hello. Bienvenidos. I am Carmen, your virtual TDLS conference assistant, and today we are going to explore how computer-generated queries can be used as powerful tools to enhance English learning. Today, we're going to talk about how computer-generated queries can help you learn English faster and more efficiently. With these powerful tools, you can search for specific words, phrases, or even whole sentences that you want to learn and then practice them until you feel confident using them in your everyday conversations. Whether you're just starting to learn English or you're an advanced learner, computer-generated queries can be a game-changer. They're fully customizable to your specific needs and can help you reach your language learning goals in no time. And now, I'm excited to introduce our amazing presenters, Barbara Van Dyken from Grossmont Adult Education and Matthew Sussman, CEO of New Voice Learning. They'll be sharing their expertise on how computer-generated queries can transform your English learning experience. So, get ready to be inspired and learn a lot from these two amazing speakers. Thank you for joining me today, and let's get ready for an unforgettable conference experience. Carmen, she's an AI, um, she's an assist, she's our AI assistant for the TDLS conference in here today. And she is um, completely, you know, she was created using an AI art generator. And um, she's brought to life with stunning detail and realism with the help of ChatGPT mm -hmm. and uh, Naraki, which are two very powerful AI uh, uh, tools. Her voice was crafted to give her a rich and believable accent. And then uh, with the assistance of DID, which is an AI uh, video generator, everything was brought uh, together to animate her and bring her to life. Wow. So um, if you're interested in creating your own animation, animated avatars like Carmen, um, you can check out the article uh, uh, in, in my reference, uh, my references by just clicking on the, um, the QR code there. And the name of the article is called Artificial Corner. It offers a step-by-step -step, um, instruction on how uh, to build your own um, artificial uh, intelligence avatars like uh, Carmen. Thank you, Carmen, for that wonderful um, <laughs> introduction. And then also in this presentation, all of the art that you're gonna see in the presentation was uh, generated by uh, uh, AI art generators. And um, uh, and the thing about this is that the more descriptive you are, the more it, the, AR, the art generator will give you something close to what you're looking for. You know, it's not, it won't give you exactly, but based on your description, it will give you something very, very close. And I really like this because now I can create images still images and also animated images uh, for my students that maybe reflect them, that look like them, that reflect the experiences that, that they're having, and um, that also help me to, uh, to uh, teach a concept because I can describe the graphic that I'm looking for to the art uh, generator and it will uh, generate it for me. Can you can you watch that QR code please? Oh the Q yeah, let's see. There is QR code. Yes, I can't get it. I love that you put in citations. Yeah. Oh good. <laughs> I I can't uh yeah, they taught me well in grad school. I was gonna say I know. All right. Yeah, okay. So all right, everybody got the QR code? Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, there'll be more opportunities. I've got them all over the place. Okay. Okay. So, uh, oops, this way. Nice music. Hello. Thanks, Okay. All right. This, um, this presentation is about search engine queries, chatbot queries, and AI tools. It's, I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. 
Um, so we're going to take a look at your search engine. Um, you know, when you do a search, how has everybody been searching? To find things, right? You know, in the last, I don't know, how many years has it been that? Yeah. You know, what, what's your go-to for finding out information? Google. 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 Okay, so we're gonna. Uh, it's a different kind of a search than using a chat bot, which is uh, Chat GPT, which is kind of taking over. Uh, it's getting all the press right now. Uh, we're gonna look at artificial intelligence tools, and we're gonna um, showcase the, the the one that Matt does, which is a uh, uh, flow speak. And then um, uh, the the core of my presentation is I'm gonna show you uh, search activities that I use that utilize uh, queries to aid in language acquisition. So there are search engine queries that, um, that went along with WH questions to, to teach WH questions. And they'll be running these through uh, a search engine and then to compare uh, in, in chat uh, GPT. Okay, so what's the difference between a question and a query? Anybody know? Anybody have that answer? The difference? Yes, of course I'm going to give you the answer. So the difference is a question is something you ask a person, right? And a query is what you ask the computer. Okay, so uh, so with a search engine, you're, you're sort of fishing, aren't you? It's like a fishing expedition. And so we're going to teach our, uh, our students how, how to fish and how to fish efficiently. So uh, the search engines, they uh, do uh, primarily search and retrieve. So they're going in and they're just, you, you make a request and it goes in and it pulls back the information uh, that you've requested. But what we've noticed is that usually what the what we get back is um, mostly advertisements. You have to sort through a bunch of advertisements before you get to the thing that you want. Whereas with ChatGPT, when you put in your search, it it talks to you. It says, "Oh, I've got just the answer for you." So we'll take a look at that. Um, so. Uh, this, so with the search and, and retrieve, the students can find what they're looking for using relevant keywords. And in this uh, uh, lesson, uh, combined with the WH uh, queries. Um, so, and then integrating the AI tools into the ESL experience. Uh, ChatGPT is what we call a conversational agent. It uses artificial intelligence uh, algorithms to understand what a person is saying, and uh, then it responds in a natural human-like way. And also another thing about this is that it's uh, this algorithm is being trained to get to know you and to get to know how to respond to you. So, and that's kind of freaky. I, I, you know, I think we need to delve a little bit more into that before we throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, yes. Is it because they are? Custom to like train to be our assistant because you're we are using the chat GPT using our account. Like no, no, but it's doing it's analyzing your language. It's analyzing what your your queries. It's taking a look at at uh, and this is you know this is really beyond my pay grade, but <laughs> I'm trying my best. Um, what I what I think it is, and please somebody correct me if if I because I'm still learning this myself. But uh, these uh, the algorithm is learning uh, the language of a general human, not yeah. just me as per se. No. Well, I don't know. Okay. That's a good question, and I would encourage you to pursue it further, <laughs> and then tell me about. <laughs> You know, we're getting into some really kind of scary territory here with this stuff, but I'm here to tell you, don't be afraid. We're in control of this, I hope. <laughs> okay. So this is what the, uh, what the studies are, have told us. And, uh, you know, learners uh, that use these database queries to access language learning materials, 
they're more autonomous in their learning and they're more likely to use a range of resources to support their uh, language acquisition. Could you move your, um, yes, I, you know, I've been trying to do that. Let's see, what was it? Control, shift, and all the pages. Okay. No, you don't have to make it stand. Okay, good. Everything good? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, the, doing these, this, these kind of queries, they enable students to access authentic texts, and it results in an improvement in uh, reading comprehension. And, they, and uh, Kim and Han found this that uh, compared to their control group, that this is that the um, the ones that were using the uh, the queer, querying databases were improving their reading comprehension. Okay, all right. And then uh, you and Wang um, revealed that uh, learners who use queries to look up the meaning of unfamiliar words showed a significant improvement in vocabulary acquisition compared uh, to their control group. Not used to these big boards. Sorry, those of you online who are a little impatient. <laughs> if you are, maybe you're uh, having coffee. So AI has a promising future in English language teaching with positive results in areas such as language skills, translation, and assessment. Um, and uh, the studies for, in regard to AI uh, show that learners who use an AI-based tool showed a greater improvement in vocabulary acquisition and reading compre comprehension than those using traditional teaching methods. I mean, this is for some pretty um, compelling, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, research. You know, if you think about it, you know, you read the, this and you, well, of course, this is exactly what I need to be doing with my students, you know, to help them to, uh, to uh, uh, grasp the language. AI was frequently used to assist students in learning, uh, writing, reading, vocabulary, grammar, speaking, and listening. So that's just, okay. So now let's get to the lesson plan. Um, the search engine queries for uh, ESL education. So what I created was a lesson plan for them to compare a search engine running their WH questions through a search engine and, and then running it through chatbot GPT so that they can compare for themselves the type of results that they get. Mm -hmm. So before we even open up the computer, before we even go into the computer lab, I have the students generate as many WH questions and answers together in class, and then they're uh, using them together. Yes. Just out of curiosity, you are using Chat GPT in your lesson, or did you have Chat GPT create this lesson? Yes and yes. Okay, good. Okay, Thank you. good. Because you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not pulling the wool over anybody's eyes here. You can create lesson plans using Chat GPT, and they're pretty doggone good. Pretty cool. You know, yeah, pretty cool. And you can adjust them and tweak them to, to fit and cater to your this the population of students that you're working with. So before we even turn on the computer, they're generating WH questions. They're using them with each other to kind of discern the difference between what kind. You know, um, a WH question, uh, where, which would tell them the location. You know, you English teachers, teachers, you know this. So they've done this. And then we go into the lab and then the computers are guided through a Google search with a list. Just prior to turning on the computer, they make a list of potential queries that they would like to um, conduct. And so this next video is uh, kind of a demonstration, or it is a demonstration of that. Let me get that. So Hi, in this.
so uh, I have a list of topics that are demonstration, I'm going to show you the difference between a search engine query and a chat GPT query uh, using WH questions to query the computer. And just uh, for clarity, when we ask the computer a question, we are querying the computer. When we ask a person a question, it is a question. But I'm going to be using these terms interchangeably because it can get very confusing. And I may just refer to the query in this demonstration as a question. Let's take a look at the search engine. In this case, we're using a Google search engine. And in here, um, I uh, would guide the students to this page. Uh, hopefully, they will all be on uh, their own computer. And then um, we will either be doing this in uh, Zoom or in um, a, on a projection uh, screen in the classroom, in the hybrid classroom. So uh, let's start with uh, the very uh, first question is who? Who is? And we're going to say who is? the President of the United States? And that's the most common question I get with my students when I do this activity is, who is the President of the United States? And it returns Joe Biden. What the search engine does, and this is how it differs from ChatGPT, the search engine is it relies on keywords and phrases, and in this case, uh, we're doing it with a WH question. Oh, thank you, so it, it uh, uses keywords and phrases and then returns uh, the relevant info based on your, uh, your keywords. And in this case, it brought back uh, Joe Biden, the President of the United States. And over here on the right, it gives a text, um, just some lovely text that you can use with the students to uh, further the uh, WH question uh, lesson. So you can have them read and, uh, you know, and do some pronunciation, uh, breaking up, you know, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. And uh, then, you know, highlight different parts of the text and have them generate even more WH questions uh, through uh, what you highlight. Like if you highlight a date, then they'll have to come up with a when question. You know, when was he vice president? And um, so that sort of thing. Now, the next one, just to, to I, I want to be brief in this so we don't take all day. Uh, so the next question would be a, um, a what question. And what is the name of the highest mountain in America? And it returns, it goes out, it's very quick. It goes out and it returns Denali. And uh, it has these wonderful, beautiful pictures of Denali. And I will even take this opportunity to show them the different uh, Google uh, menu items up here so they could look at images of Denali of the mountain and kind of scroll through there to, you know, stimulate their imagination and then use the back button to go back to our original uh, query. Now, the most natural uh, question that comes after, you know, what is the name of the highest mountain in America uh, and, and after the return of Denali, well, quite naturally, we're going to want to know where where is Denali? And, um, and this is all, you know, it's all guided. The students follow along and we take the time. So Denali is in Alaska. And uh, what is it, what's Denali also called? And this gives them the opportunity to uh, read together and uh, kind of parse out the meaning of the text that's before them. They might take a look at a map, click on the map in the, the Google menu and get an exact location of Denali. And even, you know, run a, a few little searches or, you know, run the map in such a way that they could see where they are in relation to Denali. So these are, you know, these are three questions, who, what, and where uh, uh, using WH questions. Now you've got who, what, where, when, why, how, how much, how many, and you, they can go through all of these. There's a whole worksheet that, that I've provided um, in my link for you to and, and a lesson plan for this. So let's compare it now to ChatGPT. 
chat GPT is uh, different from a search engine uh, query. It's, uh, it's a diff whole different animal in that it's um, an AI powered conversational agent, which means that through their handwriting, the students can actually have uh, a conversation with chat B GPT. However, in this case, we're going to, uh, we're just using WH questions and we're uh, being very targeted in our queries with chat GPT. So it'll be returning shorter um, answers. So the first question was who is the president of uh, the United States? And you hit return and it comes back. It's pretty much instantaneous. I, I think it might be a little slower than than the, the search engine. I, I haven't um, I haven't done any timing with that yet, but that's probably the next thing I'll be doing. So, okay, so it returns uh, this answer as an AI language model. I do not have real time access to current events or news articles beyond my cutoff date of September 2021. But as of my cutoff date, the president of the United States was Joe Biden, and um, and so this is providing some really good information. If you are looking for information that is more current, you're not going to find it in chat GPT. And that's okay for our purposes, because we just want to generate a little bit of text to give the students the opportunity to practice their WH questions. Okay, so what was our second um, question that, uh, that we asked in the search engine? I think it is, what is the highest mountain in the United States. I, I think it was America, but we'll say in the United States. And you hit enter and the highest mountain in the United States is Denali, formerly known as Mount McKinley. And uh, which is located in Alaska. Its summit has an 11, elevation of 20,310 feet above sea level. So I, when I'm in the classroom or in class, when we're doing this activity, I will highlight parts of it and like formally known as Mount McKinley. And I'll say, okay, students, what is the WH question that goes with this answer? So that's two so far. So we've got who, what, and then where. So our natural question, follow-up question, where is uh, Denali? Yeah. And there it is, Denali, also known as Mount McKinley. It's located in the Alaska uh, range in the state of Alaska, United States. So this is pretty much how I am using these WH uh, uh, queries. Uh, our, our questions are becoming queries. I'm having the students generate as many WH questions as they can. And then, um, and then you know, trying to show them the difference between you know, questioning people and uh, querying a database. Now there's one more uh, thing that you can do with this, and, and I would be remiss if I didn't show you, if that, and that is assuming that you don't already know, but uh, with ChatGPT, you can, you can ask ChatGPT to write a story. So you just say, write a story about uh, two mountain climbers, um, uh, climbing Mount Denali in the spring. Okay, but I, I, I just want to add one. Okay, write a, a, a funny short story about two mountain climbers climbing Mount Denali in the spring. And then we click on the search or the launch, the rocket, and we're once upon a time, there were two adventurous mountain climbers named Jack and Jill. And if you want to know the story, you're going to have to um, you're going to have to link. I'm going to have this in the link of my presentation. Okay, so if you want to know the rest of the story, you you gotta click on the link. Okay. Do they break their It's a trick. That's a trick. Okay. Okay. So the different types of AI, AI tools. Uh, include, you know, virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa and Google. And, you know, we're already using these. You know, if you want pizza, you say, hey, Siri, pizza near me. And what does Siri do? Nothing. Sorry. <laughs> Very 
going to be talking to our devices. Mm -hmm. We're already doing this. We're, yes. Do you use um, Alexa in your classroom? I don't. Okay, good. Thanks for that question because it was a no question. I have to go any further. Yeah, there you okay, go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and wait, wait my precious hot air. <laughs> okay, so then, you know, chatbots, uh, which can answer inquiry, uh, answer inquiries, provide technical support, or help with other tasks. So, how many of you have called, you know, your favorite big corporation that doesn't care and they don't have to, and uh, you get a uh, a chatbot that's talking to you? Hi, welcome. Thank you for calling. And you can't discern whether it's a real person or a chatbot. So that's an, another type of AI tool. Uh, language learning apps, uh, which use uh, AI to provide personalized learning experience and adapt to the student's individual needs and skill level. And that's something that is in the realm of uh, Matt's uh, expertise. And so he's, he's going to present on that in a uh, moment. It's very clear that AI technology has the power to effectively transform the way that we teach um, adult language learners, and the, the way that we teach in general, even, you know, a, adult learners or, or anyone for that matter, we're helping them you know, with our uh, language students, we're helping them not only to acquire a new language, but we're teaching them vital computer skills uh, to survive in a new and rapidly uh, changing environment and culture. So to explore the topic of AI language learning tools further. I am excited to introduce our next speaker, Matthew Sassman, who I had the pleasure to meet uh, last fall at the Catisol Conference in Pasadena, and um, where he introduced his groundbreaking work with uh, adult, uh, I mean, uh, AI powered speaking uh, practice uh, application called FlowSpeak which is a, an innovative tool uh, that's changing the way that learners practice their uh, English pronunciation skills, and it offers them flexibility to be able to practice anywhere at any time. Uh, Matthew will share with us FlowSpeak um, and, and how it's contributing to the evolution of language learning. So without further ado, let's warmly welcome Matthew Sussman. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much yes. for that warm welcome, Barbara. Um, and, you know, I was really impressed with the opening uh, plenary uh, presentation speech yesterday by Dr. Vedders, and she started with gratitude, and I'd like to start with gratitude, too. I'm super grateful to Barbara, who came up to me at the Catiso Conference. Um, really enthusiastic, everybody knows, and uh, just really leads with uh, compassion and humor um, and uh, just uh, so grateful to be connected with Barbara and have this opportunity to come and talk to you about what we're doing, uh, share a little bit about my background, and and uh, and then I have like a special offer for everybody uh, in the room if you're interested. Um, okay, so uh, FlowSpeak uses voice and AI technology uh, to help newcomers, students, uh, you know, professionals to speak English more confidently. Uh, a couple of, uh, well, actually just last, last week, I spoke to 100 students online from Indonesia. They're about to come to the United States and they're nervous. Um, they got scholarships uh, to come here. They're excited. They spent years and years studying English. Um, so they've got all the foundational skills. They passed all the tests to get in here. But they're wondering if they're going to fit in, if they're going to understand, if people are going to understand them. And so before departure, I was trying to give them some encouragement and also um, explain the difference between textbook English and real everyday English. So I asked the students, have you heard some of these expressions before? You're crushing it. It's all downhill from here. Give me a ballpark figure. And you might, I'm curious if anybody noticed that Barbara dropped quite a few when you were talking. Did I, you know, I don't want to pull the wool over your eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, we mix these expressions in our everyday life and we just like, take it for granted. We just use it for humor. We use it to illustrate a point. Uh, these are super hard. I, I'm, I'm probably, uh, you know, talking to the choir here, but, you know, these are super hard <clears throat> for uh, non-native speakers. Um, uh, to, to follow. So I did this little exercise with the students from Indonesia. 
uh, we're all on Zoom, so there's all these little small, you know, squares. And, um, you know, I asked the students, I said, okay, if you think your cracking it is a good expression, put your thumb up. And if you think it's bad, put your thumb down. And out of 100 students, 90 students went like this, right? So, and you can understand why, right? And I say to the students, well, why do you think that, you know, crushing, that's, you know, you're destroying something, right? So it just illustrates the point that English is really confusing. And we say things that's, that sound like it's the opposite. And so even if you study a lot of textbook English and you come here, you get a shock because it's like, it doesn't, doesn't seem to, you know, make sense. So uh, Barbara had a great video, and I had to up my game. <laughs> so you guys know this this gentleman, a comedian. His name's Ismo. He's from Finland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, okay, yeah. He's hilarious. So this is this is Ismo. He's talking about his favorite word. Okay, kind of illustrates the point. No, it was bad. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of illustrates the point. <laughs> Sight oh, can't be funny. reached. It's lucky to do that. That's because Instagram. Oh, Instagram's not allowed? Yeah. yeah. Okay, then I got to perform it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it was a great video. Check it. Maybe go on YouTube. Yeah, just check it. Look for Ismo on, uh, you know, uh, YouTube or something. But he does this. He does a bunch of different, you know, humorous skits. Uh, all around, you know, learning English, understanding kind of like American culture. It's really funny stuff. Uh, so I recommend you check it out. He does this, he does this bit about uh, his favorite word. And he says, Americans have this word um, for when they've had enough coffee. And, oh, like, and he says, and he says, uh, you know, you, you start pouring the coffee and you go, you know, like that. Anyway, you, you got to check it out. It's funny, um, much better than how I can do it. <laughs> um, but it, it's just another illustration of, you know, um, you know, kind of a newcomer coming to the United States, trying to figure out our culture, trying to understand the vocabulary. We're trying to bridge the gap with our technology between, you know, this kind of textbook English and the real everyday English that we're using all of the time. And I think you know, traditional publishers have shied away from this because when you're printing something, you don't want to have a mistake. There's a lot of nuance to it to explain it. Uh, and it can be dangerous. It feels dangerous sometimes because if it's used in the wrong context, then maybe it's going to sound offensive or something. <laughs> and it's also also called slang sometimes. It's not proper, but it's what we use all the time. And we're, we're I think we're doing a disservice to people trying to learn because it feels like two languages. There's, there's the English from, that you learn in school, and there's English that you hear when you have to do a Zoom meeting, when you have to do a job interview, when you have to uh, try to build up relationships with coworkers. Um, so to tell you a little bit about my story, I've been working in international education for 25 years. Um, I just came back um, from Japan, and uh, I was working with the Fulbright Scholarship Program there, and I partnered up with John Goodman, who's a technologist, and he's been working in the tech industry for 15 years. And we pitched our idea to some local investors here in San Diego. And our company is in Kearney Mesa. So we're just a startup. We've been at it for a year and a half now. And uh, these two gentlemen are ex-Googlers. They liked our idea and they, they gave us a little bit of backing. We have some professors um, from uh, San Diego also kind of guiding us. We're using the technology. And you know what I bring to this equation is that my experience with you know, uh, international students, um, sending people to work overseas. Um, and so I think the best use of the technology is to build conversational fluency, uh, being more confident, being able to follow the conversation and be able to contribute to the conversation. Um, and we do that, you know, by using the, you know, the voice and the AI technology uh, and also, you know, adding in some everyday phrases uh, that we use to help sound more natural. And the goal here is to help people, you know, uh, achieve career success. So sometimes people ask me, well, so what's your pedagogy? What's your learning philosophy behind the, all of this? You know, um, and I could probably, uh, you know, uh, talk about in different studies and whatnot, but I just think really simply that uh, learners need more practice. When I was an English teacher in Japan, I could give plenty of reading homework. I could give lots of listening homework because there's YouTube and Instagram and 
I, I can give lots of writing homework, but, but I couldn't give them speaking homework. And why is that? You know, I thought about that as an English teacher. Why my students, unfortunately, were just not getting that much better at speaking. They would come to my class once a week or twice a week, and English is fun. They learn a little, you know, they learn about the U.S. a little bit, but I'm not really helping them in their career. Um, and I thought about that, and the reason is just coming to my class twice a week is not enough. Um, but I can't give them homework because if they go home, you know, they speak Japanese or they speak Portuguese or they speak, um, you know, Thai. Um, and so they don't have the environment to use English on a daily basis. So that's the reason why we made flow so that people can have practice more often. The example I use uh, frequently is, um, you know, like if you take a piano lesson, the piano teacher, any piano players here? Anybody? Maybe you took it as a kid or something like me, you know, your, your mom forced you to take it. Um, uh, you know, the piano lesson, the piano teacher would always tell me, she said, go home and you have to practice every day. And don't come back and take my lesson again unless you, you practice every day. You know, the like, piano teachers have that like kind of Spartan image, right? You know, right? It's like that, it's like the basketball coach, right? You say, go home, shoot lots of hoops, come back again. Like every skill that we try to learn, cooking, you know, computer programming, we tell everybody practice, 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 but we don't do that with English, like like speaking. Why don't we do that? Why can't we do that? There's some we know of some stories of like some some students are super dedicated and they'll try talking to the mirror or something. But everybody's like, oh well, that's really kind of that's an outlier kind of situation. So the idea of using this technology is just to have that unlimited speaking practice. And every time you speak, you get AI scoring feedback. And because you're practicing with a machine, there's no embarrassment. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was an English teacher, I was careful about how much feedback I would give my students because I don't want to hurt their feelings. And I don't want them to not show up the next week. So I would hold back. Yeah, I see some people nodding their heads like, oh, you said that wrong. You, uh, you don't want to say it. And it gets kind of culturally sensitive too, because if you say, oh, you said, you know, it's like certain, you know, Communities have a certain tendency to say pronunciation a certain way. Um, and so it, it becomes sensitive, right? But with the machine, you get around that. So these lessons on flow are short. They're like, you know, two to seven minutes. Um, we have vocabulary lessons. We have conversation lessons. We have idea lessons. Uh, idea lessons is, you know, what's your opinion on this? Or what do you think? Or, you know, something that's more open-ended. Conversation is kind of a scenario between, uh, you know, people talking. Uh, vocabulary is learning, like, you know, expressions like caught my interest or I'm a team player. Um, and then when you speak, you can get a breakdown of, you know, your score for pronunciation, speed, and uh, vocabulary usage. Also, um, you know, it'll analyze. So this is where the AI comes into play. It'll analyze your speech and give you color-coded uh, corrections. So if it's green, it means it's clear. If it's yellow, it's moderate. And if it's red, it's, it means it's not comprehensible. Um, you can do a grammar check with it as well. And stay tuned because we're adding chat GPT really soon, which will tell you how to say it better. So that's going to be cool. Um, so um, we've had, uh, we did 20 pilots last year. Um, we have nine, well, almost 10,000 people using it now from 29 different countries. So we're still in the testing, we're still in the learning mode. Um, but we've worked with, um, you know, universities here and uh, overseas, um, community colleges, um, uh, companies, uh, hotels. Uh, we're, we're trying to reach all kinds of different audiences to see how people respond to it. And it's a continually developing process. So what Barbara experienced last, at the end of last year, we've already made you know, amazing strides since that time. But this is some of the feedback we get from um, our, our learners. I love the, the way he expressed this. He said, I used to feel stuck. So Dante is a, a researcher, very bright person, um, has been reading and writing in English at a very high academic level, but just doesn't have the chance to speak English in Brazil. Came to the United States, uh, you know, prior to coming to the United States, he's, he's concerned about his English speaking ability. Said, I used to feel stuck, like my tongue was locked. I love that expression. And now that you can practice, it feels like, you know, it's a little bit easier to get the speaking process going. So we're not even really, sometimes an expression like that, it's, like, it's not like we're really teaching English. We're just helping people unlock their potential, you know, with the English they already have. 
So me is a Japanese language teacher at Spelman in Georgia. And uh, she's immersed. She's here in the US, but the conversation is so fast. It's hard to follow native speakers. We drop all these expressions. Um, and so she feels like with flow, she can kind of understand, you know, practice these real conversations, but at my own pace. I can break it down, I can slow it down, I can do it over and over until I get used to it. And one thing I'll add to this is that um, I, I envision this tool and all of the other tools as a supplement to the classroom, not a replacement. Um, when I go into universities and I explain the platform, I think there's a little bit of hesitation amongst all of the, uh, the teachers. I think with a conference like this, it's probably a lot more people leaning towards adoption of technology. But I think when you go back to your institutions, you know, you have the whole gamut. You have some people that love to try new technology. You have some people that really scare them. But for, for me, I think, you know, the technology is like a supplement. So in the classroom, you, you know, you introduce the subject, you're, you're coaching, you're mentoring, you're explaining the nuance, but then you can use the technology to go home and practice, get in the repetition, do it 20 times, 30 times, 40 times. Elaine uh, is a virtual assistant from the Philippines, says uh, practicing with flow has been less intimidating, more personalized, uh, interactive, you know, helping her in her career. So we did, um, you know, a trial with Grossman. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, and uh, right after I met Barbara, she's like, yeah, this is great. You know, the, you know, the, the epitome of an early adopter. She's like, I'm going to try it right away with my students. So thank you yeah. very much. Uh, and so I, you know, gave Barbara like a, a, a two week um, promo code trial uh, with her students. She distributed it with the school. She made a link on Canvas so everybody could get to it easily and kind of bit, bit was our internal champion just to introduce it to everybody. Um, and we got 37 students who signed up. Um, and in between, you know, October to November, everybody used it for a couple weeks. Um, we did a survey um, and 100% of the students said it was convenient uh, for speaking practice and confidence improved and they would recommend it to a friend. You know, short time period, but um, really happy with the results. Um, so before I do this, Okay, great. Online audience. Does Flow Speak recognize and value different English English act and accents? Is there a chance of a built-in bias that values some ways to pronounce English more than others? Right, right. Good question. Thank you. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, so currently uh, we, we're trying, well, we're using American English. Um, you know, just <laughs> you know, uh, very basic, uh, you know, very common expression. But as we build it, we want to add in, you know, British English and Australian English and expressions from different parts of the country. Um, it's really an interesting experience being a part of this. I, uh, I gave a presentation to a gentleman from Nebraska, and he shared that they have this uh, expression called whipping donuts. Uh, and uh, it's about when your car is like in the snow and then you go around in circles or something like that. So, you know, regional areas have their, uh, you know, their own expressions and their own, uh, you know, way of saying things and pronunciation. Um, and so we want to build that out. So if, if somebody in the U.S. goes to the South or they go to New York or they go to Boston or, you know, they come to California, um, they can learn some of the, the lingo then that goes with that. Um, so that's part of our, our plan. Uh, yeah, part of our plan. I have a question. Yes. Does bro I don't know the program. So does this have a certain topics? They can choose topic and talk about it or they can just say, I want to practice talking about family and then the start the Yeah, yeah. So let me do the demo and I'm trying to find the, the keyboard so I can... <laughs> There it is. I'm trying to hide the, the oh. Zoom. Oh, okay. Oh, there's okay, there's cool. Um, so let me get out of that and put this down here. Okay, so I've logged in and uh, we've learned so many things. Um, uh, trying to build the app and, and use the technology and make it easy for people. One thing I thought was really insightful is that um, we're, we're dealing with um, a lot of uh, young people um, in their 20s from around the world who want to use English to improve their careers. And one thing, one really big thing I've, we've learned is that a lot of young people don't have email or if they have it, 
they don't even they can't remember their email address, much less their password. So a lot of people got kept getting stuck out of maybe people you already have this experience in your class. A lot of people were getting stuck and they couldn't get back into into the app. And so we send them like a password reset thing, and then you've got that whole like kind of you know trying to catch up. Anyway, long story short is we made a um, phone number login system. So all, if you can just remember your phone number and put that in, you can get in. Um, that made a big difference. Um, so let's say so you asked the question like how are the lessons grouped? We group these into different themes. So this is a this is a series called Perfect You're Hired. It's about language for job interviews, but we have another one like on like cultural foods. So we have a mix of kind of casual casual situations and kind of career development uh, type of content. Um, and we are working towards uh, making adaptive learning so that the learner um, uh, can get lessons um, that is suited to them. When they onboard, um, they, they can assess what their uh, level is and then they'll get lessons in that area. And going forward, they'll get lessons um, on the content and, you know, as they, as the AI is reading their responses, they'll get lessons that fit their level. Does that help answer your question? Uh, yes. And then, so it seems like currently there is no lesson for level, like really beating low. Beating Correct. Back. So this is uh, for maybe intermediate and low um, is a starting point. So as you can see, everything's in English. So they have to have an ability to, to read and to listen and to be able to follow. So um, I recommend it for um, you know intermediate. Some of the lessons will say beginner, and there's some very basic stuff in here that people can play around with. And we have a beginner course that they can go through. Um, but I think overall, to to get to this stage, to be able to to practice your speaking, you have to have the fundamentals first. You need to have a good base first before you get to this. Um, so um, this is something for starting from intermediate low. I think is is what you would look at. So, for example, you know, there's all these expressions we use when we're doing a job interview, like it caught my interest, uh, being a team player, um, you know, two weeks notice, uh, wear different hats. Um, so, you know, let's do the lesson, you know, stay on top of things. So. Uh, oh, yeah, thank you. So um, I have this one, it's, it's disabled right now, but I could put autoplay and it would just automatically um, start loading the audio, but I'll click it here. Stay on top of things. Stay on top of things means that you pay close attention to the matter. So in the classroom, you could do a lesson on this or you could spend you know five or 10 minutes introducing the topic or the, the expression stay on top of things and how funny that is, you know, and kind of visually show it to students, you know. Of what that means and then um, you could practice it in class um, you could you know um, you know mimic scenarios for that and then you could assign this for homework and say okay now go home and do this five times uh, on your own um, so first practice speaking the phrase say stay on top of things all right so i'll just tap here one time stay on top of things i tap a second time and then within a few seconds, my voice is caught, converted into text, and recorded. Stay on top of things, and then I'll get a score. And gradually, it gets more and more challenging. Now, say it more, two more times. Stay on top of things, stay on top of things. I used to do that often in the classroom, just repeat the vocabulary say over and over. Um, so kind of mimicking that. I got an excellent score this time. I actually recommend students keep doing it until they get the excellent score. Um, uh, when you do household chores, I stay on top of those. Okay, so when I do household chores, I stay on top of things. So it goes through some examples like that, and then it'll ask you questions like you would see in a job interview toward the end of the lesson so that you can use it in context, right? It gets more and more challenging. If I click on the score, it'll give me a breakdown for the pronunciation, the speed and fluency. Uh, the technology is still developing, so you might be wondering, like, why aren't you getting a hundred percent? My English is bad, maybe. You have a little rest. Uh, so I I tell students, you know, aim for over eighty. Excellent score is over eighty percent. Uh, you know, the next level down is good. Is about sixty to eighty. And then, you know, below 60 is like an okay score. We don't give out any like that was terrible kind of, you know, feedback. Uh, 
and uh, if we go to the bottom here, you can see, you know, each word is, um, you know, analyzed for pronunciation, and then you get a breakdown for each uh, sound. So household, so household, and I got excellent for each of those sounds. And then I can do a grammar check, even though this is provided. Uh, it says, it says, you know, we didn't find any um, errors. So good job. Uh, but if you were to say your own response, you know, you could say whatever you feel like here. And if you said it incorrectly, I could say, you know, I household chores stay on top of things. You know, I, I skip some words, speak a little bit more stuttered, see what, okay, my score went down. Let's see if grammar will be affected. It says speed up. So my speed went from 99 to 65. Okay, didn't find any errors there. Um, you know, my household chores, well, I didn't catch it. Um, and the next thing that we're um, working on is like, you know, it'll the chat GPT will analyze this and will give you back even a, another way, another option um, for saying that. Hmm. So that's how it works. Um, so Yes. Questions. Yes. It's more like a set of questions asked by the program and right. the student responded. Correct. And then it's more like they're analyzing your speech and they give you kind of feedback. Right. It's not really a like really conversation that you, you do with a AI. Right, right, right. Exactly. Right. We're not doing like open conversation where you just kind of the AI or you just ask the AI any question and it comes mm -hmm. back. These are all guided lessons, um, and they're they're grouped into to themes so that they, there's a specific like kind of learning outcome um, from that. Um, you know, uh, I've done English classes where you just kind of have open talk, and it, it might be fun, but there's not really any kind of learning at the end of it. I think with these kind of set lessons, is you know you can you can just for two two to seven minutes really hone in on the expression. There's a specific outcome, you know, learning that they can get from that. Um, and so that's how we're doing it, but the technology is developing. Uh, we will get to a point where you can have a conversation, um, kind of a free conversation um, with the technology. Um, but we, you know, currently this is, um, you know, the format that we thought would be most successful um, for learners. Um, we'll also be building out some more features for like pronunciation corner. So if there's certain words that they're, they're struggling with, they can practice just on those. Um, we'll also have like a word bank where people can, you know, get definitions and um, get more clarity on the words. Um, there's other, lots of other features here I'd love to show you. And I think we're kind of running short on time. Um, yes. Question from the yeah. online audience. Any thoughts about yeah. developing this for other language apps? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, we are thinking about it. Um, you know, English will probably keep us busy for the next couple of years, definitely. Um, but I think there's uh, possibilities for other languages, uh, you know, French, Spanish, Japanese, uh, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think there's I think there's potential here. One more. Is there an app for real estate? I think they just did QR code. Yeah. Yes. Um, so there is an app. Uh, so it's you can use it from any Internet connected device. Um, about 80 percent of our learners use it from their phone. Yeah, so there's these flyers. Yeah, and there's a QR code there. Um, or go to our website um, to access it at flowspeak.io. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Good for now. So, one of the, uh, there's in the lesson, there's a button to say, I want to share my responses with the community. And I'll just show you what that looks like. So, the AI is a developing technology, um, you know, kind of gives you uh, a sense of if you're on the right track or not, but it's not 100% perfect. So the way we kind of supplement that is by having a, a channel here where you can connect with other people on the platform and members of our team to get feedback on your English. It's kind of a safe space. Um, one of the things we learn, other than just, you know, getting people logged in with um, cell phone numbers, is that a lot of people don't have anybody to practice English with or share their excitement for English um, or kind of feel it's at the, the, their same level. Um, and so we've created this space where people can leave their responses from their lessons and get feedback. So friends, and here's Joy. I'm ready to go with the flow. So she, she did a lesson. I'm ready to go with the flow. 
nice job, Joy. I'll give you a like. That was clear. You know, so it's it's like social media for English learning. Yeah. Yes. Who did you say can respond? Uh, anybody on the platform, actually. Um, so here's a person that says, hi, how's it going? Hi, how is it going? Okay, like. And then I can just type in here. I could say, you know, great job, MC. Keep going for it, you know, or give some encouragement. Um, and for for learners, um, we can we're looking at building features for teachers to give specific feedback to their students as well, kind of in a private format. This is kind of a public, you know, space where everybody can see it. But if somebody were to write something inappropriate, it can be flagged and immediately removed. So Matt, can I load in my student? Can I? I mean, is that how it works, or is it just kind of free for all? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for thanks for asking that. So um, we have admin panels for organizations. This is a group we're working with in Japan as a company, um, but it's just the same for like, you know, a school. And we can list up all of your students like in an LMS like this. And you can see, you know, how many lessons they started, how many they finished, how often do they retry in the lesson? This is critical, um, you know, getting in the repetitions. Um, and then their confidence level score, and you can see, even more data on the lessons they finished, when they did the lessons, what their score looks like over time. <clears throat> can everyone see that? Yeah. And you can see what lessons they did. Okay, so you can see the dream, a big dreams lesson, you know, five repeats and got an average score of 84. Okay, good job. You can see when they're doing the lessons, if they're doing them daily, or if you assign like, okay, do four, four a week or something like that. Um, you, you keep track of that. And, um, you know, I, I'd love to talk with schools about how we can use this data to supplement your, um, you know, your purposes with CASAs and the data that you have to prove the effectiveness of your studies. I think we've got a lot of data here. The thing I'm trying to learn at this conference is how can we, you know, um, kind of uh, help you um, with your reporting. So we can produce reports like this um, on the student stats. One more question. Yeah. Um, one for Barbara and then also for Matt. Okay. Um, for Barbara, can students have a conversation with chat with chat uh, GPT? Yes, they can. It's all written. It's not. It's not a spoken. Um, it's everything in chat GPT. They have to write, so they have to practice their writing skills. So yes, they can. The answer to that is yes, uh, but don't have them do their term paper. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't, remember how someone had a question and your video was on there and it was stopped because you were answering a question? Yeah. The sound was fine. It was, they were confused because the video hadn't started yet because you were asking a question. Oh, remember that? So everything oh, was, okay, good. That was perfect for to see. Mm -hmm. um, and for Matt, is most of close to be practicing set phrases or can students say their own sentences? Yeah, thank you for that question. Yes, you can say your own, own phrases. And so the way we made the lesson is, um, those units I was showing you with the series, and they're based like on job interviews or world foods, and there's uh, many of those. The way they're built is first you start with the vocabulary, then you do a conversation, and then you do an idea lesson. And the idea lesson is open format, and um, you can say whatever you want in any of the lessons, by the way. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, just email me us. Or, you know, uh, or talk to me after, and I'll answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much yeah. for coming. I really so appreciate it. I'd just it. like to end yeah. it. If anybody's interested, happy to do a pilot program for free with your institution. So if you're interested, just email me, or you can check out the, the details on our website. Uh, I have business cards up here. Let's talk. Thank you.